What? Yeah, I don't know where those are. I asked for them. I asked Miss Gail for the clippy things that go on the desk, and she gave me these black things. So if you want to blame somebody for that, blame Miss Gail. I absolve myself of all crimes. Just please be careful. I have no idea where to get those clippy things. I've asked, and everyone's like, I'll get back to you. No one's gone back to me. So that's my life. Uh, please make sure your homework is out in the middle. You're working on you do now. Coming around to collect. If it's not out at this moment, it will affect your percentage. If I don't get it right now, make sure you stop in study hall and drop it off. We'll be extra. Thank you. Well, I, uh, this is your warning for your voice. I get that math and be confused and frustrating because we need to talk. what it says, multiply. Virtual people, make sure you check the announcements. Today is lesson 74. Make sure you get the ad dance thing. I'm supposed to do now is in the middle. We have two and, two and a half minutes. Pretty good walking in, so I'll give you your ALS point for walking in. Make sure you get those ALS points. Yeah. 
and keep going to your assessments. I hope I have some help for you. I got 30 minutes or so. You got 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. See that for 1.7.5 inside the house and divide by 1.5. Make sure you move to that side. Okay, that's what I Time is up. What you do now in the middle. Make sure your voices are off. Make sure you get the eye cam statement for the day. And lesson 74 on top. Uh, before we begin, I just want to make, I want to remind you of those two rules we talked about on Friday about multiplying positive and negative numbers, multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers. Um, when they're both the same sign, your answer will be negative or positive. Jaslyn? Right, so no matter what, a negative times a negative, positive times a positive, a negative divided by a negative, a negative positive divided by a positive, it will always be positive. What happens when you divide and multiply something that has two different sides, a negative and a positive? Cherish? The answer. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. It's, it's not positive. It's the opposite of positive. You're right. Negative. negative. Remember those rules. Because um, for myself and the exit, I'm going to do now, right now. That was not a real struggle for any of you, which is awesome. That means you got me a lesson, except the, when you got to the fraction, obviously, and you got the decimals, the minor. Go to Freckle. I post a bunch of assignments on there every week for you to practice those skills. Because right now, those basic skills of multiplying fractions, reducing fractions, dividing decimals was the struggle that I saw. All right? Practice those skills. And we will have some practice today. As we talk about fractional parts of a number, part two, arms up. Um, say it with me, boys. Or before you say it with me, I'm going to say it out loud. I can identify the fractional parts of a number. Say it with me. I, I can identify, identify the fractional, fractional part of a number. number. So instead of what we had yesterday, where we had a fraction of a number, now we're equals something. Now we're going to get a fraction and something equals. This, whatever. I'll show you a little bit. Uh, please make sure you're paying attention, taking really good notes, because I was reviewing it over the weekend. This is actually a really tough lesson. There's two things I want you to write down on the top of your page so that you can be successful. The word, I want you to write the word of, like this, equals, well, multiply. I should probably write the words so you don't get confused. Multiply. Because we're going to be working with word problems with these. So say this fractional part of this, when you see the word of, you have this on the very top of your page that you know that means multiply. Because we're multiplying things. So when you see the word of, you can rewrite the whole problem for the word of. You just write the word. You just put an X there for multiplication. Then I also want you to put the word is equals. Well, actually, equal. It means put down the equal sign. So when you see the word of, that means multiply. When you see the word is, that means equal. When I say of, you say multiply. Of. Multiply. Of. Multiply. Of. Multiply. Of. Multiply. Of. Multiply. Of. 
Of. When I say is, you say equal. Is. 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 Equal. There you go. Please remember that throughout the lesson because that will be very, very important as you go throughout this lesson. I get rid of the words now. Make sure that's on the top. I will be looking at that when I collect your notebooks. All right. Example one. What fraction of 56 is 42? First of all, the word of. Who can remind the class what that means? Of. When you see the word of, Sarah. Multiply. And Bray Lynn, what does the word is mean? Equal. Right. So I'm going to put WF so for what fraction? Times 56 equals 42. Because we have what fraction of, so multiply, 56 is equals 42. Taylor. WF. For what fraction? I would suggest you using two letters, what fraction and what number, because that will play a big role in what you're doing today. Fish? Wow. So just don't put down W or X without what fraction, what number, because on your work, this should be the first line I see on your work. <gasps> on your exit ticket, you got to fill in this equation. This equation will never change. Fish? Of, equal. of, equal. of, of, equal. is, equal. is, equal. good. Let's see what else the book has to offer. So what fraction, you write it as this, just like the book says. You should have that in your notes. That's the question. That's the equation. So what you're going to be doing here is you got to first, like we did last time, right? We got to get that WF by itself. What are they doing right here to get WF by itself? Which you should be having down as well. The Jaquel. I almost said Jaquel. Jaquel. What was it? Not multiplying. Because that line is the universal symbol for Sydney. Dividing. Because when you see a multiplication sign right here, the only way to get rid of that number is by dividing. Because 56 divided by 56, London, right, if both of these cross out to become one, now they're nothing. One is really nothing because anything times one is itself. Now, since you happen over here, remember, since this is a perfectly heavenly world in math, whatever happens over here has to happen over here. So you divide 42 by 56. What would you do next? I just want to get your opinion. What do you think will happen next? Because now you have 42 over 56. What else in the world would you even do? Allie? Awesome, Natalie. Perfect. I'm going to give you a payment for being so brave and getting it right. You're going to simplify. You want to get in its lowest terms. So as you see right here, three-fourths. So I went through the first example pretty fast. I think there's three examples for today. Now I want to get through the first example so you can see what it's like. So now WF equals three-fourths. Then you circle it because you're all good students, and you circle your answers. And there it is. Okay, anyone? Maybe I'll give them um, uh, five payments. Can you tell me what number, what greatest common factor they divided 42 and 56 by? Lawrence? Six. Let's see here. Okay, phrase common factors. Let's see. 42. Here's a 42. I got a seven. Six. Okay. Is there another 40 or no 56? Hmm. No, but wait, what am I doing? Okay. Let's do it this way. That was multiples. That's my fault. One. Forty-two, two, twenty-one. Uh, what is it? Three and uh, 
three n. What three times equals equals forty two? Three times what equals forty two? Taylor? You're right? Fourteen. Good job, you're right. Let's see, what else is there? Hmm. Four? Nope. Did you get six? Six times what equals forty two? Okay, six times seven. Can't think of anything else, is there? We divide 42 by what, nine? No. How about eight? No, okay, so let's go on to 56. Make a lot more room here. One times 56. Also keep in mind this is greatest common factor. Uh, let's see, two. Two would be what? 28. Okay, three, that'd be one, be 26, nope, four, be one, 16, so be four times 14, that's 16 carry the one, be four. Ooh, I think I just found it. Cherish? Right, the greatest common factor is 14. Which 14 times 3 equals 42. That's how you got the 3 on top. 14 divided by 4 is how you got 4 on the bottom. I want to make sure you understand that because we've been having a lot of trouble with that. Even I do. Because you saw right at the beginning, I went to the multiplication chart. That's not factors. That's the multiple. You can use it to help you figure out 4 times this equals that. But any questions on greatest common factor? Because that's also been a huge struggle with us. No? Moving on. Wait one second. What was that last part? Oh, this is important. What decimal part of 56 is 42? The procedure would have been the same, but the last step would have been writing three-fourths as a decimal number is 0 0.75. How do you write a decimal number? This was one of the options you could do on your do now right now. How do you write a frac how do you turn a fraction into a decimal number? This is a very big deal. One of your exit ticket questions asks this. You do exactly the same thing, but then you get three fourths and you gotta change it into seven zero point seven five. How do you do that, Taylor? No. Lawrence? You divide. Like it says. You take three divided by four. Got zero, and I got thirty. Got to put the decimal because it goes straight up. How many times can go in there? Seven. Seven times four is twenty-eight. Subtract. You got zero. I mean, no, I got two. Drop down another zero because there's an infinite amount of zeros. Five. Twenty. Zero. So remember, every single number in the history of mankind has a decimal right behind it, an infinite amount of zeros that you drop down. You got to remember how to do that. You take the numerator divided by the numer denominator, and it'll give you a decimal number. And you got to keep going until you get a zero down here. Fish? Well, Sorry, I went through that fast, but I want to make sure we have enough time for your exit ticket. All right, three fourths of what number is sixty? All righty then. First of all, you gotta rewrite this. What's the fraction? Graylin. Okay, three fourths. What does the word of mean, Uriah? What number? Like I said before, use you go put W N for what number? Is is what, William? Is means, I say is, you say, class, is? Equal. Is? Equal. William, what's the answer? There you go. And last number, 60. Do you see how we made that entire, um, I keep saying function, but um, problem 
by using those words. Now, from the last fractional part lesson, how in the world do you get three fourths away from WN? Because you want to do something to get rid of three fourths. Does anyone remember? How do you get a fraction just to one? Sydney? Can't divide a fraction. But when you do divide a fraction, what happens? Oh, I've heard someone whisper it. Braylon? No, not quite. Natalie? Five. Multiply by what? Starts with an R. Some people can do this, I can't. Some can do it backwards, some people can do it forward. London? Yeah, you gotta find the reciprocal. So to get rid of this three fourths, you gotta find multiply by its reciprocal, because that equals one. You got four thirds times three fourths times W N equals sixty times three. Oh, I'm sorry, not three fourths, four thirds. Like we just talked about, four thirds. I don't see your pencil moving. I know you can't write that fast. But I really need you to focus and get these things done. Four thirds and three fourths just become one and one. So now they don't matter. So we got W N equals. When you get to this part, because there's an invisible one, but I'm not going to write that because why would I? Because it's yeah. What you're going to do is take sixty times four divided by three. So you're gonna take 60 times four, which gets you six times four, put a zero behind it, Leah. Okay, 240 over three. What's 240 divided by three? London? 80. Correct. That's all you're doing today, boys and girls, is that you're flipping, trying to get rid of whatever is over here so you can figure out what missing number do you have. Any questions on this? Make sure that if you have a question, you raise your hand, because if I hear your voice, it will be a deduction. No questions? Make sure you follow this step-by-step step with your notes. The example guide above has ways to help you as well. You got three-fourths. You set up the equation. You multiply by four-thirds by four-thirds. Multiply by four-thirds. You simplify. You get 80. All right. Do we need to go through, does everyone remember how you divide by a decimal? Does everyone remember how to divide by a decimal? Please tell me now because you will get problems like this in your homework. Anyone want me to go through it real quick? Okay, we'll go through it real quick. Because this is a very important. So for instance, you got 60 divided by 0.75 which is the equivalent of, what was it, three-fourths? Four-thirds, yep, yeah, that's the equivalent of four-thirds. Three-fourths. Um, when you divide by a decimal, the first thing you gotta do is move the decimal outside, okay? I moved it twice, which means over here with this decimal, I have to move it twice, which means then when we write this as 75 divided by, I moved it twice, so 60, then you got to add two zeros because I moved it twice. Make sure that's in your notes because I'm not going to be answering questions. Mr. Stever, how do I divide by a decimal? 
when I just gave you the exactly how, then you just divide like norms. So we're not going to go through it because of time, but that's how you get, that's how you divide by decimal. You got first move the decimal outside, then you got to move the decimal inside. Now, if there is no decimal out here, but there's a decimal in here, nothing changes. So let's say you're dividing by 6.1 and you're dividing by 3, that's oh, 12. Is there a decimal in front of this three? So you just divide like normal. And then this one goes straight up. Beesh. That's how you divide it by a decimal. So you only move the decimal place if there's a decimal in front. Well, that was the last example. Any questions? Now's the time, because if not, I'm going to be asking you if you can confidently say I can identify the fractional part of a number. Raise your pencil above your head. If not, if you still have questions, you can keep your pencil down, and I'll come around and ask you what's up. But if you feel like you're confident, go ahead. You have the top of this page. You have your notes. You have your book. Take your time. You will have 10 minutes. So hold 10 minutes for three questions. First thing you should do is set up the equation so you know what you're doing. Then you got to get W by itself. Get ready, get set. Go. Make sure you also put your name on top. For those who are at home, uh, for those who are at home, if you have any questions, please hit the raise hand button. I'll be walking around a little bit in here. And when I see you have a raised hand button, I will open up the chat.